QuickBooks Online 2024 Pay Down Credit Card Form. Get ready because we're going to Bookkeeping Cloud 9 with QuickBooks Online. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant. Because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in our browser searching for QuickBooks Online test drive, looking for the result that has Intuit.com in the URL, Intuit being the owner of QuickBooks and selecting the United States version of the software, verifying that we're not a robot. Open up our major financial statement reports like we do every time. Reports on the left hand side. We're in the favorites. We're going to right click on the balance sheet and open link in new tab. Same with the profit and loss. Right click and open the link in the new tab. Let's take a look at those tabs. Go into the middle tab up top. Closing up the hamburger. There is our balance sheet. Tabbing to the right. They're closing up the hamburger. There's our profit and loss, otherwise known as the income statement. Going back to the first tab, that's the setup process we do every time. We're going to do our data input on the first tab. A look at the result of that data input on the tabs to the right. Selecting the plus drop down. We've been looking at the forms for the customer cycle, the vendor cycle, then jumping over to the other, which isn't actually a cycle but everything in this section typically represents forms that usually will have an impact on the financial statements or at least types of things that we do periodically they happen on a fairly regular basis now we're going to go down to the pay down credit card so the pay down credit card form you can think of it as basically similar to a transfer form we have a similar kind of problem we addressed with the transfer form that being that we have two accounts that are related to financial institutions. Instead, this time of having two, two checking accounts, like a checking and savings account, we now have a usually a checking account and then a credit card account. The credit card account is represented by a liability, but it can still be connected to the banks uh, with that bank feed uh, type transaction. Now you'll recall with the transfer form, why did we use the transfer form? Just to give a, a premise as to why we might use the pay down credit card form. The reason is because if you think of taking money out of your checking account and putting it into the savings account, we could record that with an expense or check form. But if we record it with an expense or check form, it'll record the proper journal entry, decrease in the checking account, increase in the savings account, It'll show up as an expense form in the checking account, which makes sense because it, expenses usually decrease the checking account. Expense forms usually decrease the checking account. Doesn't necessarily need to go to an expense account because we might be buying an asset, for example. But then when we look at the savings account, we'll have an expense form in the transaction detail that would have been increasing the checking, the savings account, a bank account, and that would look funny. If on the other hand, we said, let's go to the savings account and solve that problem by using a deposit form to record the transaction, I could deposit it into the savings account to record the transfer and record the other side coming from the checking account. That still would record the same transaction increase to the, uh, the checking account and decrease to, I'm sorry, increase to the savings account, decrease to the checking account. but it would show the deposit properly this time in the savings account but the checking account would have an expense form with a negative amount in it and that's the purpose of us using a transfer form because the transfer could mean an increase or a decrease just a quick recap on that if i go to my balance sheet here and we go into the checking account we can see that we have the detail deposits normally uh, will of course increase and then expense form, check forms, and so on will typically be decreases. 
in order to avoid a situation where we have an expense form that results in an increase to, the, to some kind of bank account or to avoid a deposit form that has a decrease, those two things looking funny, uh, that's why we use the transfer form. That'll also help us with our filtering because often we want to filter by transaction type. And if I want to see the increases, I would typically want to filter by transaction type and then look at uh, equal to the deposits, right? And, and, and so, but I might also have to add the transfers so that the transfers could be either an increase or a decrease. If I was to filter it like that, closing it out, and now you can see that we have uh, the transfers also representing, uh, are there any transfers here? These are all deposits, so we don't have any transfers, but if we had a transfer, it could be an increase or a decrease depending on which way the transfer went. Okay, same kind of thing with the credit card. If I close this out, I go back to the first tab. Uh, when, we, when we pay the credit card, we most likely would think of, I'm paying it out of a checking account, so I'm gonna write a check to the credit card company, which is most often still what most people often do, and that's pretty much fine. It's not gonna be a big problem. Uh, it'll look pr proper on the checking account side because the expense form will be decreasing the, the checking account, and that seems normal. But when we go to the credit card side, it's gonna show this expense form in the credit card and oftentimes we use the expense form to record the charges to the credit card because you'll recall in quickbooks online this expense form is is the form that we could use and change it from the checking account to pay stuff by paying the the credit card so i could enter my transactions that i normally pay off uh like with a check like the utility bill the the the, the gas bill and whatnot, I might pay it with a credit card and I could use the same expense form to do that, which instead of decreasing the checking account would increase the liability account. And so if I close this out, so that means if I also record the decrease or the payment out of the checking account to the credit card account, it's going to show an, an expense form that's going to be going the other way. So let's check it out just to show you what I mean. If I go into the to the uh, liability accounts here. We've got our MasterCard, there's our credit card. We could see here that when we purchase things and charge it to the credit card, the form typically used is the expense form, the same form that we use when we buy stuff from the checking account with an electronic transfer, possibly being recorded with the help and use of the bank feeds. But instead of decreasing the checking account here, it's gonna be increasing the liability account for the payable of uh, the, the credit card. So if I go into it, you can see the charge here. And instead of going to the checking account, it went to the credit card. And then down here, it's charged to a job because we have a job cost system. But if, we, if it was purchasing like the telephone expense, it would be going to a normal kind of expense account down here. So you could see that we have these expenses. Here's what, who we purchased it from and we purchased fuel here and DEX, and this is the account that what's charged to. Now it's possible also for us to then enter a bill and then pay off the bill possibly with the credit card. That's what happened here. So if I go into this one, we entered the bill and then when we paid the bill, instead of paying it out of the checking account, we paid it with the credit card. And that, so it's a similar kind of process. We're using the same forms that we would in the checking account but recording it on the credit card, that's because they're both like financial financial, uh, financial institution backed accounts, right? They could both be connected with the bank feeds to the, to the financial institution. Now, the only decrease we have down here is this one, and it does say it's a description of a monthly payment, but it, they recorded it with a credit card credit, which I don't think is exactly the proper uh, payment, but you could see that it's a different type of form. It's not the form that I think is exactly proper because we should be using the pay down credit card form, I believe. But you could see that a different form is being used as opposed to the expense form, which at least shows that it's that it's something different. It's not in here with an expense form. So let me show you what I mean on that. If I exit, if I go to the first tab, hit the drop down, it looks to me like they used this uh, form uh, credit card credit 
form, which is under the vendors section. And I think this form might be more appropriate if you had some kind of credit, like a chargeback from the from the uh, credit card company. Like they charged you something and then they, then they took it back or something like that. Uh, be, that seems to be the more appropriate use of this rather than the normal payment of the credit card, which would, which would be then I would think more useful to use the form designed for that purpose it looks to be the pay down credit card form. That's what it's specifically it's designed to do is to actually make that payment. So again, you, you could use other forms to do these transactions, but these forms are designed to differentiate that transaction detail. So let me just show you the problem if we entered an expense form. So you might say, okay, why don't I just pay down out of the checking account using an expense form? Let's take a look at what that looks like. So if I go into here and I say that we're going to pay down the credit card, let's just call it, let's just call it credit card. I just made up a new vendor for credit card it's going to come out of the checking account and then we're going to pay the 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 visa account i'm going to put it on there as of the 31st and let's say that we're just going to put the other account to the mastercard mastercard which is our credit card liability account so you can see it's a liability now this is not a problem due to the fact that it's a liability account instead of an expense account the expense form does not mean that we always have to buy expenses with it that's not the issue because we could have purchased fixed assets, which is our, an asset or inventory down here. The problem is that, that this transaction type form could get confusing. And that's what those other forms are used for, even though we end up with a bunch of different forms. So let's put this at just $20 just to practice with. $20, this is going to decrease the uh, checking account and the other side's gonna be uh, going to the credit card. Let's save it and close it. Let's go into our balance sheet. Let's refresh it, run it again. And oh, hold on a second. I have to increase the date to the 31st, to the 31st, run it, and then go into the checking account. And then we could see down here that we have $20 decrease. So it's in there with an expense form. It looks normal here because it's a decrease and it's an expense form. So that doesn't look unusual. That wouldn't really be a problem. But if I go on the other side, if I go into the credit card now, and I say, let's go into the MasterCard, then this one says it's a decrease now, but it's a decrease with an expense form. That's an issue because again, I can't really fill, if I wanna filter by my expenses, the decreases, it's gonna be difficult to do it. Or if I wanna filter and find the payments, I can't really do it because I use the same form and I usually filter by transaction type. Remember, we filter by th this thing over here. I can add a filter. And if I wanted to, to filter by the transaction type, that would be one of the most common uh, filters. So we're gonna filter by transaction type uh, equals, and then we can choose you know, our expense form, expense expense form boom and then and then so but but it kind of it kind of messes things up if i use the expense form and it has both increases and decreases okay so if i go back exit and i go into here and i say okay instead let's pay it down with a pay down credit card form and so now it's going to say uh which credit card did you pay we're going to say mastercard and the payee, I'm just going to call it credit card. And we're going to say, how much did you pay? Let's just say $10 this time on the 31st again. And what did you use uh, to make the payment? We're going to say it came out of the checking account. So I made payment with a check. No, if it was a check, you can hit here and it'll assign a check number. We're just going to say it was an electronic transfer. You have your memo capacity attachment show cancel clear save save and close or save and new let's save it and close it and now when i go into my balance sheet i can run it again take a look at my checking account and if i scroll down i could see now hold on i don't think it it didn't take i'm going to run it again 
Okay, there it is this time. There's our $10. So now you can see instead of it just being an expense form, it's a credit card form. That's a pro and a con here because it's nice that I could, I could sort by my filters looking just for the credit card payments. And if I recorded them all with this form, that's kind of nice. But if I wanna look at all my decreases to the checking account, I would then have to remember that I got to pick up the expense form, the checks forms, the check bill payment forms, and the credit card payment forms, right? But if I go into it, I'll drill back down and there is uh, my form. Going out, back on over on the credit card, it looks a little bit better on this side. So if I go into the actual credit card now and I scroll down, then I have my payment showing as a credit card payment rather than an expense form like this one was. So it's a clear differentiation if I wanna sort by my transaction type. So bottom line is it's not the end of the world if you recorded it with an expense form. It's just that it doesn't, it's the transaction form over here. It, it will make some filtering options a little bit more complex. So it would be better, like if you, like you probably wouldn't want to go back and redo all your, you know, and try to fix the fact that you've recorded something with an expense rather than the credit card payment or anything like that, because the transaction will still have the financial statements correct. Doesn't really mess anything up, but it does make it a little bit more tricky to filter uh, the forms over here. So if I go back, back to the first tab, and again, just remember when you're looking at the transaction detail and the bank feeds, that if you have both of these set up the checking account and the mastercard and you paid the the credit card then hopefully when you go in here automatically it will show that it's it's going to be not a category which will be an expense but rather it's going to go over here to record as credit card payment right and then that'll that'll give you uh, that that same kind of transaction, but you can do it through the bank feeds. You can usually record it on the checking account side and then double check it over here or match it on the other side. I'm gonna open this up again, hit the drop down. Now also note that sometimes people might have done the same thing with like a transfer form. Like if you use the transfer form to pay off the credit card, uh, you could say it's, it's going transfer from uh, the checking account and then it's gonna go into the MasterCard account and say it was a transfer of, let's say $5 this time, 1231, this would be a similar kind of thing. So you, you can kind of, I kind of feel like maybe they went a little overboard on the whole different kinds of forms because they might've been able to use one. I'm not sure exactly, how, you know, how much more benefit you would get from the credit card payment rather than calling them a transfer or something like that to have them differentiated but the transfer could be going either way. So again, there's pros and cons with it. But if if you did it this way, you paid off the credit card with a transfer, which sometimes the bank feeds does by default, it kind of, it might record it like as a transfer. And then you'd have to remember to record it as a credit card payment. But again, if you recorded it as a transfer, not a big deal because again, it's gonna, the journal entry is gonna be the same. So if I go into here, so now I, I'm gonna say, uh, didn't take again. Let's run it again, run it. So here it is. So now you can see it again, same thing. It's going down, but now it's a transfer. And remember the transfers can go either way. I guess the credit card payment, the benefit of it, as you know, it's always a decrease, whereas a transfer could be an increase or a decrease. So, you know, <laughs> but the, the bottom line is it's something different here. And then if I go on to the other side, it would still be something distinct on the credit card. So it might be the case that you've recorded some of them as transfers because that's what happened to be the default bank feed went to. And again, not the end of the world and it's still a nice differentiation from the expenses. The point is you have a different transaction type for the normal expenses and the payment. So if I go back on over, close this out and I go to my credit card. In other words, sometimes when you go to the bank feeds like, and you pay the credit card, it might default to a record a transfer because it can see that you have transactions on two of the financial institution bank feed accounts, but the other one's a credit card. So it might not always pick up that instead of a transfer, it should be a record as a credit card. So in other words, if you saw this come through on the bank feeds, 
it might record it as a category, which would be an expense form, if it didn't pick up that it was also on the other credit card side, or if it did pick it up, it might then record the same transaction as a transfer because it has two bank feeds, so it might see it and think that it should be a transfer form instead of an expense form, but record the same journal entry, or if it can tell and be more advanced as it gets better, it'll be able to tell that it's actually a credit card and then it'll record it with a uh, credit card uh, payment form, which again will record the same transaction, but show it as that credit card payment. 